housing market is cooling now, but it's not been a good year for first-time buyers. The figures from the Halifax show us just how bad. There were only 300,000 first-time buyers, and they made up less than 30% of all new mortgages. This is a very nice flat here. Mirto Michal is one of those who's hoping to buy before the year is out. She's had her offer accepted on a one-bedroom flat in West London, but it's been a long haul. I've been looking for um, 18 months. Prices went up and I had to um, uh, look in my budget again, refinance, um, have a new uh, mortgage deal and also have uh, some uh, funds for, from, uh, from my parents, additional funds for my parents. According to the Halifax, things got a lot tougher this year. The number of first-time buyers was down 44% on five years ago. The average house is unaffordable for first-time buyers in 96% of towns in the UK. And the average price paid by a first-time buyer rose above £175,000. In some parts of the country, house prices rose by 20% or even more in 2007. Now, confidence amongst buyers and sellers has taken something of a knock. The question is whether 2008 is the year that more first-time buyers can get a foot on the property ladder. So now we can see there are approximately 40% fewer houses for sale. According to some property experts, prices could fall sharply. We've seen significant house price growth in many areas, many parts of the UK, uh, through 2007, in many parts uh, up, upwards of 20%. Now, to tempt buyers to make offers on property now in this kind of uncertain market, you've got to offer a discount to persuade them to bid today for something that they feel that they might get cheaper tomorrow. If that happens, it would be potentially good news for those at the bottom of the property ladder. But homeowners are worried about talk of a crash. There have been constant rumblings of a dramatic readjustment, and more joined the chorus this year. The rate of price growth has slowed. We're seeing some areas see small price falls. But not everyone's convinced this will happen. Many property experts believe the market's only heading for a slowdown. The big falls are actually going to be in the level of properties that are sold. Um, we expect a 17% drop in transactions next year, and I think that's what's catching a lot of the headlines, this real drop-off in market activity. Um, but with falling interest rates, um, hopefully with slight improvements in confidence in the new year, um, you know, house prices will still rise, but, but, but sort of still less than the rate of inflation. The government says the solution lies in building more homes, and lack of supply has certainly driven the price rises. But it's the credit crunch that's the most important factor now. And what we don't know is whether it will cause a short-term blip or long-term downturn in prices. Sarah Pennells, BBC News. Melanie Bean is a mortgage expert from Savills Private Finance. Very good morning to you. Morning. Uh, first time buyers, 25 year low for them. Yes. Uh, wh why has it got so bad? Well, it's, a, it's an affordability issue. Uh, you basically look at how much people are earning and then you look at house prices. And we've seen such phenomenal growth, particularly in the last three years, but really over the last 20, 30 years. And, um, and it's been able to borrow enough to get on the housing ladder. Yeah. Now, we're hearing of a slowdown in 2008. Is that going to be all good news for first-time buyers in particular? Well, a bit more realism is going to come into the market. I mean, it's already starting. I mean, people generally think it's going to be a slowdown rather than a crash. So people who are holding off buying in the hope that prices are going to halve in the next year will probably be disappointed. But certainly, you know, it, things are starting to slow down. A bit more realism is entering the market. And that's good news for first-time buyers because this double-digit growth we've been seeing, certainly over the last three years, is really unsustainable and making that gap between earnings and prices so much bigger. And what does it mean if first-time buyers can't enter the property? market. What does that mean for buyers and sellers further along the chain? Well they really are. First time buyers are the lifeblood of the market because if you, you know, you've got your property and you want to move on up to the next ladder, next stage, you can't do that unless someone is buying your, your home. So basically everything slows down and, the, and people who are moving on just can't do that. So we really do need a good supply of first time buyers coming into the market. And when we talk about a dip in prices next year, are we talking about a slowdown in the rate of growth of prices, i.e. that prices will still go up but they'll go 
go up uh, less rapidly? Yeah. Or are we talking about prices actually dipping under what they currently are? Well, it depends who you listen to. There's so many you know, different versions of events flying around. Some people are predicting a fall. Others, Some of the big lenders, like Nationwide, have flat growth. Um, the company I work for, in fact, are predicting a slight increase, but it will be much less than this year. Okay, and if people are thinking, I will capitalise on the market at the moment, sell, go into rented accommodation, buy low later on, is that a wise thing to do? Or Sounds not? a bit risky to me. The trouble with the market, people don't know, you know, um, we could all sort of, you know, talk to somebody who, kn who knows better than us or has crystal, nobody knows, and actually trying to time the market, I think, is foolhardy. Okay, Melanie Bean, thanks very much for your time this morning.